back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan, and I am excited to be back. We took a bit of a hiatus. So first off, happy 2023. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season, even though we're like a month into 2023 now. Nonetheless, I am pumped to get back into all of the juicy and good content, talking about everything from weight loss medications to how to manage your lifestyle to some of the psychological, behavioral, and habit formation stuff, and of course, everything in between. So to kick things off with one of my first videos since coming back, I wanted to talk about this shortage that's happening with Ozempic and Wagovi. What's the deal? Why is it happening? Why do drug shortages even happen to begin with? So let's get into it. Now, just quickly before we really get into things here, a couple of quick housekeeping things. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Click that button, turn on your notifications so you know when I start put out a new video. As well, check out the links below this video to not only reach my other channels where I'm on the tick, the talk, the gram, or you can search me up at the official Dr. Dan. As well, you can sign up for my newsletter down below and you'll get an email every time I post a new video or the comings and goings of what I'm doing. Doing. Same thing if I ever happen to get cancelled, you will be able to stay in contact with me and me with you. So drug shortages aren't a new thing. In fact, they happen all the time. And well, if you ask my seasoned pharmacy friends, they'll tell you that they didn't used to be as much of a thing, but now it's much, much more of a problem given that, well, we were already having them and experiencing them for a couple of different reasons. Then we got the whole pandemic thing and it's even worse. When it comes to medication, we really kind of got to ask the question, well, these things are kind of important to, you know, prevent death and allow people to live healthier lifestyles and what have you. So why would a drug shortage even happen in the first place? Largely, the medication shortages that we're seeing these days are due to supply chain issues. Just like any other kind of product that we consume or use, the drug products or medications go through a number of different processes, kind of like the links on a chain, in order to get to the final product that is currently sitting in your kitchen cupboard. You see, first off, the raw ingredients are acquired from the manufacturer, and then we gotta put in things like fillers, preservatives, and a whole bunch of other things for allowing for compressing into a tablet in order to preserve the molecule, to stabilize the molecule, all these various things that kind of go into it. Then it's all going to be bottled up in some kind of form or fashion. That bottle then has to go get a label put on it. And then finally it gets taken to a wholesaler. That wholesaler then ships it out to the various pharmacies and the pharmacist can then dispense it and hand you your medication. So as you can see, there's a lot of steps in that overall process. And if one of those steps gets disrupted by say not being able to access the raw ingredients, well, suddenly that whole system chain is going to break down. Now, do you remember this poor bastard right here when they got stuck, caused a whole worldwide kerfuffle, was stuck for quite some time, actually 106 days in total, and that led to a number of different issues in terms of our supply chains. Because not only was everything that was on the Evergreen ship there delayed, every other ship that was waiting to go through the canal but now couldn't was also going to be delayed. So who knows what are the various products that could have been on there and if one of them was a raw ingredient that was needed for drug manufacturing a particular drug, well, you're now going to get a drug shortage or at least a delay in the supply. Now, I'm not sure if you remember the Zantac recall. It happened like millennia ago, not actually, but it did happen before COVID, so it does kind of seem like it was millennia ago. Well, Zantac got pulled from the shelves because it was found to have or contain a potential carcinogen, something that may cause cancer in humans. The drug itself, Zantac or ranitidine, which we use for things like heartburn, is perfectly fine. There's no problem with that molecule. It was what was found with the molecule in like the filler or some other component of the tablet and capsules. So obviously having a potential human carcinogen mixed into your tablets is going to be no bueno. Like 
likely low risk and not actually going to cause any health concerns or problems, but we definitely want to get rid of it. It's kind of like, you know, eating an extra large pizza, which I may or may not do on a consistent basis by myself, because pizza is awesome, obviously. Um, it's like finding a hair in one of your slices of pizza. You know, you're kind of eating along and you find this hair, and now you've got the whole dilemma of wondering, well, are there other hairs in the rest of the pizza? Is it just this one slice? What do I do? Do I kind of eat around it? Do we throw out this slice? Or do we get rid of the entire pizza? It really can be a really challenging call, to be honest. Anywho, other factors that can sometimes lead to drug shortages are when, say, a manufacturer, whether they are a generic drug manufacturer or the brand name, they created the original drug, but due to patents kind of expiring and various things in that perspective, it might get to the point where it's no longer profitable and maybe it costs them money to actually manufacture and produce said drug. I mean, ultimately, all of these companies are businesses and they do have a duty to their shareholders to be profitable. So manufacturing something that's costing you money is not a very good business strategy. And finally, all of these drug shortages can ultimately be worsened when we have, say, a surge in demand. So let's take the children's Tylenol, Advil, or even just all the cough and cold and flu products at present. If you've had a cough or a cold recently and you've tried to go get you a regular bottle of Buckley's or what have you, you're probably gonna be struggling to find it. And that's because all of those products are shorted. The reason being is that first, we had a very high uptick of viral illnesses that went through children. You know, they all got back to school and stuff and daycare and they're all little germ factories there. And they ultimately all got sick and caused all kinds of problems. And now we have a shortage on a number of those cough and cold products. And now we're seeing a whole bunch of viruses going through more of the adult population. So we got another surge in demand, but the products ultimately aren't there. Or if they do come onto the shelf, they get picked up very quickly. So as you can see, there are multiple different things that can contribute to a drug shortage and can be very problematic overall. Let's dive into the big question that we wanted to answer here is what specifically is happening with the Ozempic and Wilgovi shortage? Now, I do wanna just kind of remind you as like a bit of a technicality, if you will, Wilgovi and Ozempic are the exact same molecules. They have the same active ingredient called semaglutide in both of those molecules. They're just used at different dosages and for different indications. Ozempic being for diabetes management and Wagovi being for obesity or weight management. At present, as I'm recording this video, it looks like the Wagovi supply issue has pretty much been resolved, at least in the United States. It seems to be that pharmacies have the drug, everything's all good and hunky-dory there. However, there still seems to be some shortages with Ozempic and certainly in other countries up here in Canada where I am and in, other, and in Australia they can't actually get access to Wagovi at present. Here in Canada we haven't had a problem with Ozempic at all but we definitely have had Wagovi approved for almost over a year now maybe almost a year and we can't get access to it. Pharmacies can't bring it in in order to provide it to patients. Largely the shortage with these two medications was due to a large increase in demand. Demand. You see, Wagovi came out, showed these dramatic and amazing results with one third of individuals in the step one trial losing one or one third of the individuals in the step one trial losing over 20% of their body weight, huge amount of weight loss, very, very successful. And then, you know, a couple celebrities go and see Elon Musk and various other celebrities then picked up on it to kind of use it and help them to lose or shed a few pounds. And suddenly we've got an explosion of its use and a huge uptick in demand. Further, all of that was coupled with some manufacturing issues, including some raw ingredient acquiring things as well. There was some FDA inspections of one of the sites that manufactured Ozempic and Wagovi and they found that, you know, their air filters needed to be changed or what happened. Have you and ultimately wasn't up to code and so they weren't able to manufacture those drugs for a period of time. And essentially everyone, especially Nova Nordisk, the drug manufacturer of Ozempic and Wagovi was caught off guard. Now you might be asking the question that if Ozempic is used for diabetes, why is it being caught up in the shortage in terms of Wagovi? And again, to kind of answer this question, Wagovi and Ozempic contain the same active ingredient, semaglutide, and 
And ultimately what happened is there was a huge surge in demand for Wagovi and everybody jumping on that drug. Wagovi then became shorted because we didn't, uh, we didn't know what was going to come in terms of the demand as well. There was the manufacturing issues. And then ultimately what people were doing is they were going back to the doctor. They still wanted to be on this, the medication in order to help them to lose weight. And so physicians started prescribing Ozempic off label. Now this is perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with it. We do it with drugs all of the time where we use a drug that is not indicated for a specific condition, but we have data to show that it is still effective. So there's technically nothing wrong with this. And ultimately, yeah, we got a whole bunch of prescriptions coming in for Ozempic because the Wagovi was no longer available. They contain the same molecule, so we're getting that same drug to have that same effect ultimately. And boom, you get a huge surge in demand and suddenly Ozempic is also shorted. The big question is, where are things currently at? As I said, it looks like the Wagovi shortage has been pretty much resolved, at least in the United States. It's still not available here in Canada or in Australia. The Ozempic shortage, the US seems to be doing okay in that regard. It kind of is intermittent a little bit, but it seems to be that you could still get Ozempic. Again, it's gonna probably vary state to state and that sort of thing here in Canada. And as far as I know in other countries, there hasn't been a problem with Ozempic. But we're probably not going to see Wagovi, at least in Canada and Australia, till March, maybe? That's kind of the rough timeline that I've been kind of told by some of my drug rep friends, as well as reading news articles from various Nova Nordis sources and stuff. So it looks like March 2023, we should have Wagovi. I'm not necessarily holding my breath, but the fact that they're correcting the shortage in the US is promising. Nonetheless, we still have about a month before March rolls around, so what can we kind of do in the interim? First and foremost, there are a number of other medications that are currently on the market that are GLP-1 receptor agonists. I don't know why I did quotes there for that one, it just wasn't really that explicit. Anyways, GLP-1 receptor agonists, there's a number of medications in this drug class. That is a class that Ozempic and Wagovi belong to. These are drugs like Trulicity, uh, by by Yureta, by Yetta, by Yetta, something like that. Anyways, there's multiple of them in this class. So especially if you have diabetes, you could get switched over to one of these other medications within the same class. However, if we're looking at it from more of a weight loss perspective and standpoint, Technically, the only other GLP-1 receptor agonist that has the indication for obesity or weight loss is Saxenda. Now, the difference between Saxenda and Wagovi and Ozempic is that Saxenda is once daily, Wagovi and Ozempic are once weekly. That's one of the big things. There is some data to show that Wagovi and Ozempic might be more effective than Saxenda. However, Saxenda is still very effective at what it does, and certainly I've seen lots of people do very, very well on it. And if you like doing something every single day as kind of a reminder versus trying to remember to take a dose once a week, this might be a better option for you. Further, many people in the US of A have also been getting switched over to a drug called Maugero. I did talk about Maugero in a previous video, kind of going over some of the trial data, did not go too in depth, but stay tuned for a future video. Mangero or tirzepatide is kind of the new kid to the market. It is a GLP-1 and GIP receptor agonist. And the two of them together seem to have a synergistic effect and are proving to have some very, very impressive results. Anyways, people are getting switched over to this Mangero, especially if they have diabetes for managing their blood sugars. It has been approved and is available in the US of A. It is technically approved here in Canada for diabetes management, but like Wagovi, we currently don't have access to it. In fact, Eli Lilly, the drug company that makes Mangero, hasn't really done any kind of news promotion around it, probably because they don't want to build up the hype and not be able to deliver. As far as I know, they might be having a similar issue to the Ozempic and Wagovi situation where Basically, Wagovi went shorted, then we got Ozempic shorted, and now we're getting Mangero being shorted just because everybody is so excited about it. And so the drug manufacturer, Eli Lilly, I know is doing its best to get production ramped up, but there may be shortages in that regard, and also delays in seeing it in other countries outside of the US of A. I know, this is all very, very fascinating. And if you're a pharmacist on the front line, I very much feel for you because drug shortages are a pain in the butt. 
Anywho, that is the update in terms of the Wagovi Ozempic drug shortage. As I said, hopefully this will all be resolved in the near future, but it could be anybody's guesses. And if there is some other kind of, you know, supply chain issue, well, we're kind of up poop creek without a paddle, if you will. If you're looking at other options for potentially helping to manage your weight, there are drugs like Contrave, which is approved basically across the globe at present. Very, very effective. It has a slightly different, me or well, very much a different mechanism of action compared to Wagovi and Ozempic. Similarly, there is Quisima, Quisima, Quisma, it's the fenteramine and topiramate combination that is found in the US, is another option that may help you on your weight management journey. So there are certainly a number of different options and approaches that can be done here, Saxenda, Contrave, and other drugs that are available. Ultimately, you need to talk and follow up with your family care team. So that is it for today, you beautiful people. When I have more information to provide to you, I will definitely let you know, but at present, that is all that I got. I wish it was more, but this is where we currently are. On that note, I'm going to give you the housekeeping rundown, everybody, in that you need to subscribe to my channel. That is the absolute must to make me feel real good and help boost up my self-esteem. But also check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it, we are out there. As well, click the links down below and you can get my weekly newsletter as well. You'll get an email every single time I drop a video, so be sure to check that out. Same thing if I ever get cancelled, perhaps, who knows? I'll things are definitely possible. If I ever get cancelled and you're signed up for my newsletter, we can still be in contact and I can let you know where I'm at and what is going on. And as always, you beautiful people, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.